Today we'll be discussing the top 10 cities in America that may not be the best option for buying a house right now. These cities are facing high housing costs and have a significant chance of experiencing a housing market crash in the coming years. In fact, some of these cities like Las Vegas have already seen a downturn with home prices dropping by 5.4% over the past year and projected to decline further by 23%. So let's start with Las Vegas, our number 10 city. The primary issue here is the lack of affordability. Currently purchasing a house in Vegas requires paying over $400,000 with a monthly mortgage and property tax payment of nearly $2,700. This is simply unaffordable for many locals, considering the median household income in the area is only 67,000 per year. Locals would need to allocate 45% of their gross income to cover house payments, which is unsustainable in the long run. Moving on to number nine, we have Nashville, Tennessee. During the pandemic, the city experienced a surge in investor, investor purchases, particularly in Airbnb properties. However, this trend has declined significantly with investor purchases dropping by nearly 60% in the past year. Now, it's up to local home buyers to support the market and unfortunately, the typical local home buyer in Nashville, Tennessee earns 76,000 per year and the payment required for a mortgage and property tax amounts to 33,000 annually. Now, if you do the math on this, this means that they would need to spend 44% of their income to afford a house, significantly higher than the long-term average of 23%. So what's concerning about Nashville is that they have never experienced a major housing crash before, leading many residents to believe that it's just not possible. However, the data suggests that Nashville's housing market is currently one of the most overvalued in America with prices needing to drop 32.5% to reach historical affordability levels. Additionally, the slowdown in Airbnb bookings and revenue in Nashville may result in forced selling of Airbnb investors, adding further strain to the market. Now let's discuss our number eight city. Portland, Maine. This city has seen a significant housing price increase over the past few years, with prices rising by 40% from around 300,000 to nearly 500,000 today. This surge was driven by people from Boston and New York City buying second homes during the pandemic. The city center now has few options available for less than $600,000. While prices have held steady during the beginning of the housing downturn, it's doubtful this trend will continue, as locals simply cannot afford these inflated prices. With the average local buyer needing to spend 49% of their gross income to afford a house, many buyers are becoming house poor, having to cut back on other aspects of their lives. This situation increases the risk of mortgage defaults and foreclosures. Our concerns about Nashville and Portland highlight a broader issue in the housing market. Many cities across America, especially those in the Northeast and California, are expensive due to factors like wealth, and limited home construction. Other areas like the Midwest and Deep South still offer relatively affordable prices uh, for home buyers. For example, in Arkansas, buyers only need to allocate 26% of their gross income to housing payments, compared to 64% in California or 47% in Florida. Now let's move to our number seven city, Miami. Miami has historically been vulnerable to the recession with unemployment rates reaching 11% during the last downturn. Currently, the city has unemployment rates of 2.3%, but this is unlikely uh, to last. When job losses occur, distressed selling in Miami's housing pri uh, prices or market will likely follow. Unfortunately, Miami's affordability metrics are among some of the worst on the list. To afford a mortgage, interest, tax, and insurance, the typical home buyer needs to spend $3,000 per month, equivalent to 55% of the area's 66,000 median household income. The city's service-based economy, similar to Las Vegas, offers many low-wage jobs which have not kept up with inflation or the rising rent and home prices. Next on our list, number six, New York. While the cost of living in New York City has remained high, even in surrounding areas like Long Island, Northern Jersey, uh, Westchester, prices are still really high. Just 15 miles north of New York City, 
in Bronxville, a four-bedroom, three-bath house with 3,000 square feet can cost $1.6 million, with a monthly cost of $11,000 a month. The reason behind these high prices is not only the wealth in the area, but it's also the limited construction of new homes. Although a major housing crash in the New York City area is unlikely, the metro is currently overvalued by 12%. Now, it's important to distinguish between expensive cities and overvalued cities. Some areas like New York and parts of California have long been expensive due to various factors, while other experienced a surge in prices and mortgage payments, making them overvalued. Our top five cities fall into the latter category. But before we move on to the next city, we wanted to take a moment to ask for your support. If you find this information useful, please consider giving us a thumbs up or subscribing to our channel. Now to our top five. At number five, we have Phoenix, Arizona. While the housing downturn has already begun in Phoenix, with prices down 5.4% over the past year, the city remains overvalued. Prices would need to decline by an additional 25% to return to historical affordability levels relative to local income. Now, San Francisco takes our fourth spot on the list. It's currently the most expensive housing market featured here, with a typical home price exceeding $1 million. Although prices have dropped nearly 10% in the last year, they are still historically high. San Francisco's housing market faces various challenges, including high crime rates, a decline in tourism, and a struggling tech industry with layoffs at major tech companies. San Francisco is currently overvalued by 27%. Now let's discuss our number three city, Sacramento. Home prices in Sacramento have increased to around 565,000, but they are still too high for locals to afford. Buyers would need to spend over 4,000 per month, which is more than 50% of the area's median household income of 85,000. These high prices and mortgage rates need to decrease for most home buyers to qualify for a mortgage. It's important to note that not all areas in America face the same housing market conditions. The Midwest and Deep South offer great affordability with housing costs requiring a smaller percentage of gross income. At number two, we have Orlando, Florida. During the pandemic, the city experienced a surge in home prices, leading to inflated prices that outpaced income growth. Orlando is currently overvalued by 32% and faces the risk of job losses in its tourist dependent economy. In the past, unemployment rates in Orlando skyrocketed during the economic downturn, which could lead to distressed selling and further price declines. Finally, at our number one worst city to buy a house is Riverside and San Bernardino, California, my home, my old hometown. Uh, these areas were hit hard during the last uh, housing market crash, with many home buyers losing 50% in their home value over a five year period. Although another crash of this magnitude is unlikely, prices could decline by 20 to 30% in the local economy in Riverside. Uh, where it relies heavily on tourism and low-wage service jobs, making it vulnerable to recessionary pressures. It's crucial to exercise caution when buying a house in these cities, as they are currently experiencing significant housing bubbles. Unless the United States experiences high inflation and wage growth in the coming years, the current levels of home prices and mortgage payments are not sustainable. Wrapping things up, thanks for watching this video. If you found this information helpful or insightful in any way, we would so much appreciate if you take a minute and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our latest videos on the housing market and other valuable topics. Your support means a lot to us and it helps us continue to create content like this that brings value to our viewers. Thanks so much for subscribing and liking our videos.